Okay. I see actions. Can somebody tell me on Instagram if you see us live on YouTube? Huh. It's not doing anything. I don't know why. I see a live and like 50, it's like counting the seconds. Does that count? Oh, really? Yeah. On YouTube? Uh, no, just on our thing. No, that's stream, yo. You have to go on the uh, YouTube link. Somebody has to let us know if it's working. Yeah, somebody has to let us know. I mean, I'm on it. I don't oh, see it going through. They're saying yes. You see us on YouTube? Oh, yeah. I see me on YouTube. <laughs> hey, YouTube. Hey, Instagram. I think everybody's here. We figured it out. They said it's, it works. Everybody's typing on YouTube. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Instagram, for your patience. I am so, so super thrilled to have my friend here. Okay, you ready for this? I'm about to pronounce her name correctly because she's Icelandic. So she has a super cool name. So I practice. Her <laughs> name is Sayun Thorsten Daughter. Did I do it right? Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. I am so excited to have Sayun here. She is a super cool cellist, a wonderful cellist. Uh, she's a prize winner of Nomberg competition. For those of you who don't know, that's like a super, super fancy, extremely prestigious competition. Uh, I think I did it years ago. I think I was only in the semifinals, but she was a prize winner. Um, and she's played with like major orchestras, including the LA Philharmonic, the BBC Symphony. So we're so lucky to have her here today. Thank you so much oh. for coming on here and answering our questions about Bach, um, about sound, everything. And by the way, we are all, uh, the both of us are doing a sound production. Is it called sound production? Uh, you have a name for it. What's the name of the class, the master class? Cello Sound Alchemy is the name of the course, but the, 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 the name of the course or the masterclass we're doing on Sunday is how to get a professional sound without strain in just 10 minutes. Right. Yeah. Yes. So if you haven't already, go to my link or in the down bar on YouTube, sign up right now because that's, that's not going to be on YouTube or nor Instagram. That's like a private Zoom link. So you want, you don't want to miss that today. We're just giving you a little taste of what we may do in the masterclass. So it's totally free. So just FYI, if you, you're not doing anything right now, just go ahead and sign up. So now, today we are going to talk about how to sound good playing Bach suites, which most of us do play. There are six of them. And actually, Sayun just made a recording, an album, uh, which hasn't come out yet, but it will soon. So I was like, let's talk about Bach. So she recorded all six Bach suites. But before we talk about it, I thought it would be so special. Sayun, what do you think if you play a little for us? How about yeah, that? I'd be happy to. So which I'd piece are you play? To. Which one? Yeah. So um, I was thinking I could play a little bit of the sixth suite, the Quran from the sixth suite. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. It's really fun. I love this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Sayun, do you mind joining Instagram again? Because I think we lost you. <laughs> oh, no. I'm back. That's all I'm right. Back. But it's, it's um, yeah, you might have to accept my uh, joining there. Okay. But, uh, yep. but while you're doing that, um, I, I want to ask you, uh, because, you know, there are six box suites, and it's like, you know, this is like a major cello rep, right? Everybody, I'm sure everyone has already played, or mo many of us played, Bach uh, Suite One, uh, Two, Three. I mean, they're all so different, right? So how do you how do you approach that when you practice for your um, your album? Like, how do you even? There, there's so much. How do you how do you practice? There's so much, and the thing is to really break it down into like bite sized things. Like each suite is so different, having very clear characters and and things that you want to bring out in each suite. Are we back on Instagram, by the way? Yes, you are. Okay, awesome. <laughs> um, and, and just being really clear and intentional about what you want to express in each one. But there are mm. things that go for all the suites, like, you know, things that I just need to be thinking about all the time. Because it, yes. it is a little bit different from playing like other rep. And yeah. that is just being super, super um, intentional about how you use your bow. And right. I was actually really inspired by um, like Baroque bows, you know, how the, the ones that are um, yes. what are they called concave, convex. I always get them mixed up. I'm not sure. I but think yes, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, this one's convex. Okay, so okay. I'm, I was super inspired by how they use those Baroque bows because it's very different from this bow. Mm. Um, and would you say actually, like, you know, there are many, I mean, I, I wasn't supposed to ask her questions, but I just started thinking about it. Like, I, I was thinking about like how you deal with the bowings for mm -hmm. Bach, because you're so, thinking about the Baroque bow. So do you try to be as close to what Bach wrote or like, for example, Bach one, some people yell at me because I do it all slurred. And then of course, what's it written is. So how do you approach it? I'm curious. So I actually, I play it like that. I play, I play yeah. the, the, but there are other bowings that I don't do. And because the reason I don't do them is because I think at that time it was much more accepted to kind of do your own thing with bowings. So uh -huh. I want to go back to, cause we don't have the facsimile, right? We don't have right. his manuscript, but we do have the Anna Magdalena copy, his second wife's copy of it. So I go to that, look at those bowings, and some of them are super unclear. Like some of them are not um, very specific on like which notes are slurred yeah. and stuff like that. So I take artistic license a lot with bowings, but I do use her as like inspiration. Absolutely, I, I think I do the same. And also, you know, back then people used to do a lot of ornamentations, you know, Absolutely. and they did their own thing with the repeat, especially some people now still like add their own ornamentations. So there's, it's not like, I don't think he was that, I want to say anal, <laughs> as we think, it's like, we have to do it like that. You know, I think as long as we are honoring what the music is trying to convey, exactly. I think as long as we're honoring that and then looking at it from the artistic point of view of what you're trying to say musically, um, there is some artistic license, right? Absolutely. That's cool. So I heard that you have three tips for us on I how do. to sound good playing Bach. Can you I share do, with us? I've got three tips. And these have been amazing for me, so I hope they help you. The first one is I think about my upper arm and swinging from my upper arm a lot. And sometimes I see cellists kind of like doing the bop from the elbow, and it kind of starts to become like a little bit like um, robot Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> I like to swing from the upper arm because it gives so much shape to each bow stroke. Mm. And it really gets depth, actually, too. So first can, can, tip is really yeah. swing from the upper arm, you know, like. Instead of. Oh, is that like. <laughs> Don't do that, guys. <laughs> Use your entire arm. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, you also need to join again. I oh, think no, <laughs> my phone keeps um, crapping. I think you that. should uh, do the mode where you um. Okay. The Hold the on. battery thing. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna request you again. Okay. Uh, no worries, everybody. We are having a good time. We are having a conversation today with Sai Yoon about box suites and her experience learning it and some tips on how to make box suites sound good. And we're having some great conversations and we may have some time for uh, Q&A at the end. So right now what we just did, we went through tip number one and Sayun was saying that sometimes people only use a portion. And if you're my student, you know I've been talking to you about that, right? That don't use just one portion, you have to use the entire arm. And a lot of times I tell people, you know, the motion comes from the elbow, the tip of the elbow. So, um, so try to do that as much as you can. Um, and that actually gives a better sound, right? Yeah. You want, look at how, actually, look at how much weight the arm is. The arm has a lot of weight and you want to just utilize, you know, get your money's worth, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> get your money's worth for your arm. You have the whole arm. And for someone like me, you know, I'm a little bit chubby. Hey, more <laughs> meat and more sound for me on the cello. <laughs> That's amazing. So that's tip number one. Okay, so use the entire arm. What's this tip number two? Okay, tip number two is don't try to go too close to the bridge with your contact point. Because uh, then you start to get like that scratchy sound. Yeah. Keep, keep in that nice and like pillowy um, contact point that's a little bit higher. It gives you a little bit more depth. Like if you're using your upper arm, it gives you a little more to sink into. Because mm -hmm. if you're a little too close to the to the bridge, you start to get those like high overtones, which sometimes are great. But for Bach, I think stay stay a little bit um, higher. I know that that might be controversial, but I promise, if I do, it just doesn't sound very good. But and it doesn't sound. I don't know. To me, at least, it might sound like yeah. a microphone. But to me, that doesn't sound too wimpy, you know? Yeah. So you, your name happens to cover your cello, but just to be clear. So this, you were, you were saying, don't go like right on top of the bridge. But yeah. we're also not talking about playing here or anything. So no. are we talking about like around here, would you say? Exactly. Something like that? Yeah. So everybody, so Instagram, can you guys see? I'm going to show you right now. Around here. So she's saying, don't play here. That's gonna sound scratchy, but we're not telling because the reason why I want to clarify this because I'm yelling at my student every week about <laughs> playing too fluffy on here, right? Yeah. And so you have to find that sweet spot where yep. it sounds good. And for Bach, we don't want that super core kind of sound, right? So you have to find that pillowy, like you said, beautiful sound so that it really has that ring. I think that's what you're saying. I think yeah, and maybe I should clarify like. So that core sound that you're talking about is great for like Dvorak concerto. Yeah. Great for like, you know, Brahms sonata. It's great for all those romantic pieces. But for Bach, it just kind of, yeah, it doesn't doesn't do it for me. So yeah, yeah. finding that great contact point is super important. Sayun, can you just, just so that we have an idea, and if you can maybe move back about uh, an inch, because your your name kind of, yeah. Okay, so play for us maybe like um, a passage from Dvorak versus a passage from Bach, so we can really see what you're talking about. Okay, so if I were to play like, you know, beginning of Dvorak is, sorry. <laughs> Close, close to the bridge, yeah. But then... Ah. But I'm not trying to do that. You hear how that kind of just doesn't right. work? Right? It's like aesthetics, it doesn't work, right? Right, so just finding that right sound. I think every piece has its right sound. Yeah. So th there's gotta be a right kind of sound for Bach. What's your third tip? Okay, third tip is well it sort of covers both of those things but i think it's important when we you know bach didn't write any dynamics mm -hmm. and so a lot of times people you know want to be musical and so they they put dynamics in but the thing is with bach if you go louder by pushing and like trying to just go loud 
It doesn't work. Go for resonance. Mm. Resonance is what's going to give you that big sound in Bach. Don't try to push the contact point like that. Don't try to like, Go you know, the sound. yeah, it just, it'll like scream back at you. It just doesn't work. So go for resonance instead of just playing loud, you know? Okay. So, and how do you go for resonance? Can you give us an example? Like, like forcing sound versus resonance? Yeah. So even in the, the, uh, like, let's, let's talk about like uh box six prelude, right? So yeah. instead of kind of going, right? Yeah. Try to go for try to go for just like getting all those overtones. Right, right. Yeah, I, I do see what you mean. So it's just really look for that uh yeah, resonance like you said. And that ring, I like to say, you know, there's a yeah. ring. And sometimes for me, when I find that ring, I can literally feel the vibration in my fingers, mm -hmm. in my hand. So like really try to find that vibration. Those are really excellent tips. And by the way, for all of you on YouTube and Instagram, if you're just joining us, I'm talking to Sayun. Uh, and oh, by the way, we have a master class coming up, a join master class coming up this Sunday. And if you want to get the link, um, because it's not going to be on YouTube or on Instagram, it's a private link, you must sign up. Uh, in the link in my bio on Instagram or in the down bar on YouTube. So make sure you sign up right now so that you don't miss because this is just a little bit because Sayers and I are going to go a little bit deeper about sound production, right? So can you tell us a little bit about the course? Yeah. Uh, the master class that we master class. So here's the thing. When I um, was first starting out, you know, trying to be a professional cellist, this something sound was something I really struggled with because it's one thing to be playing in a practice room mm -hmm. and it's another to be playing like in bigger halls and bigger rooms or even being able to like blend in a chamber ensemble like if I was playing in a string quartet or something finding a way to be uh, to project or project. to blend in right like whatever right. I needed to do and so I came up with a lot of stuff and I thought about it a lot about how to make a really great sound no matter if what hall I'm playing in or what circumstance I'm in. So I wanted to get you on there too to get, because I know you're just as obsessed about sound as totally I am. Totally obsessed about sound production. Yeah. Let me tell you a story. When I was young, um, I people told me that I had no sound and that I was super soft. So ever since then, I became obsessed with sound production. Um, and it's, I think, you know, I don't think I'm that unique. I feel like it's sort of like a cellist thing. I think totally. all cellists are trying to draw the sound, mm -hmm. right? We, we're drawing because we don't want to, it's, it's not this, it's this, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So we, we're definitely going to talk more about this. And I, as I mentioned early, don't forget to sign up so that you can get that special Zoom link that is uh, not open to public, only for people who um, participated today and signed up. So make sure you go to my link in bio and also in the description on YouTube so that we can see you uh, on Zoom. So now, you know, uh, we have some questions. I got two questions. And for those of you who are, are typing on Instagram and YouTube, you can go ahead and maybe type a couple questions, but I have some uh, two initial questions from Instagram from people that, you know, maybe Sayun can help us answer about Bach. And the first question is from Ellis-Cello40 from Instagram. And I think she uh, she was asking about how, where do you start after playing Bach Suite 1? I think what they're asking is, do you jump to Suite 2 or do you jump to Suite 3? What's the process? What do you think, Sayun? I think it's so personal. I think it's super important that you, you know, talk this over with a teacher because they're going to be able to tell you what's kind of the next best, you know, step for you. But generally, I think the suites kind of go in order of um, uh, kind of difficulty. So yeah, if you're feeling really good about suite one, probably suite two is going to be your next step. However, yeah. there's a caveat. Suite two is in minor. <laughs> yes. And that, I mean, that opens up a whole nother can of worms. And so if that is a little too difficult for you, maybe the third suite might be a good next step for you. Mm -hmm. It just depends. Not knowing Ellen at all, I, I think. Ellis. Ellis. Uh, Ellis. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I would 
just recommend maybe first asking a teacher or somebody that knows you're playing really well, and then maybe look at suite two or suite three, depending on, um, yeah, what you feel like tackling. Yeah, and then four, five, six is like a whole. Oh, that's like. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely, I would say, I mean, they're all difficult in their own right because they're all so different. Of course, you're dealing with, I mean, for me, I learned box five, tuned down. Yeah. I go this way, turn down. And I love it that way, you know? And there was the original lute version, I don't know if some of you are aware of, um, which has box manuscript, the lute version, with like amazing harmonies that are not seen in the cello uh, manuscript. That's beautiful. Uh, yeah, and, and, and just, uh, yeah, harmonies and also ornamentation. So it's really cool. If you have a chance, look at it. My old teacher, Lawrence Lester, was a champion for that. So yeah. he was always talking about Bach 5, and I'm just, I love Bach 5. It's so dark, so beautiful. So good. Bach so 6 good. is impossible to play. I never can sound in tune. And <laughs> hence, you know, my NS cello has six strings. So I just, yeah, so I'm going to try to play that. that. Box six, what this one does. So I, I may try to do box six on that and see what happens instead of like. <laughs> you know, just, so just yeah. do it over there. But uh, anyway, so yes, box six and then uh, box four is also the with all the flats, man, and extensions. I, I don't know about you, but by after prelude, I'm like, ah, my hand is tiring. Yeah. You have to really release your left hand for that one because otherwise you are in trouble because the yes. rest of the suite is just as bad with all those it's extensions. Bad. It's a lot but. of extensions, a lot of flats. But anyway, um, we have one more question and then let's open up maybe a couple more on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, another question came from Matt Dia SDR, I think. Um, oh, and they were asking about Prelude 4 and how to conduct the bow. I think they might be asking about um, string crossing. crossing. So can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Okay. So this is actually, I don't even know if I should say this on, um, like say what on, you want. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually kind of my secret. So you guys are going to get, um, this, this might be a little controversial, but so, okay. okay the, the reason he's asking about the, um, the um, bow and yeah. four is because there's this huge jump, jump from C right. string up to the A string, right? This yeah. huge string crossing so hard a lot of people end up elongating the c string in order to get up to the a string right and it right. totally screws up the rhythm and everything so right. if you're gonna do it that way you have to really anticipate with your elbow so you can so yeah again total upper arm all that stuff yeah you can actually my time but you say start going with the elbow Anticipate. Right, as you go up, yeah, anticipate. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but what here's about the, the thing. Oh, go ahead, yeah. So here's my secret. What's your secret? I should probably trademark this. <laughs> um, Shh, don't tell anybody, guys. <laughs> What's the secret? Tell us. Okay, so I actually play that starting up bow. <gasps> Shocking! And the reason is... What is all this huge thing with your arm? Oh, because you just want to do a little like it's so much easier. Wow, I, I've never done it, but but I might just secretly try it and see whether I can try do it. it. See what you think. <laughs> I will. I will try it. Um, okay, so let's. Should we answer a question from um, since we did to Instagram? Any questions from YouTube? Uh, I don't see any questions. Virtual clap, bravo, saludos. Oh. Hey, if you guys have questions, now is the time to type it down on YouTube. But maybe there's something on Instagram. Do I see anything on Instagram? Uh, where? When will we listen to you? I think they're asking about the class. Can you repeat when that class is? Oh, so class is on Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Is that right? And I'm on the on the West Coast, so I well, know it's at 10 a.m. my time. Yeah. Well, if you sign up for the email, I'm sure there will be an email with detail. But it's like Sunday. Sounds like it's one o'clock Eastern. That sounds right. We should probably get that right. But it is it is going to be in the email. And actually, there's a countdown timer on the registration page too. So if you want to be like super super on it. 
Yeah. Okay, so somebody asked about Oxford cellos. Do you know anything? Have you heard of Oxford cellos? And if so, are you, what are your thoughts? Have you heard of... I have never heard of Oxford cellos. I don't think so. Maybe they can tell us a little bit more of what what that is. What are, what what K KYJ24? What are Oxford cellos? We're not sure. But maybe we'll come back to your question because I see a question on YouTube now. Okay. How to choose different types of string crossing based on the music? Oh, that's a good question. Mm. How do you choose different types of string crossings? Uh, so, okay, Sayun, that's I don't even know how to answer that. I know, that's, that's a tough one. I think a lot of it depends on what kind of character you want, what kind mm. of tempo you're playing. Because if it's a fast one, you probably want to use the smallest possible. Like, I always like efficiency, right? <laughs> Yes, yeah, <laughs> So I'll just try to do the smallest possible. So if it's just like fingers, or I like to use sometimes like the pivot, um, like keeping my arm high and then using kind of a pivot thing. Or sometimes, you know, if it's really juicy, like that fourth sweet one, yeah. where I want to get all the resonance I possibly can. But you know, yeah. then there are other things like um, Piatti One, that's all, you know, all up there. Yeah. I just actually, I do this. I just go doon, 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 doon. Oh, I use yeah. my wrist. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. What do you do well, again? So I do like kind of like, you know how like you're, um, if you're like whisking like uh, eggs. eggs or something. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of do that. Oh. Yeah, that's good too. Well, how do you do it? Am I doing it right? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, so I mean, there are different ways, you know, like, for example, beginning of Bach one, I also do, I call it dipping, dip, dip, yeah. dip, 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 so, and then there are times, you know, you have to use, I mean, it's all connected, you know what I mean, like, it's, but you should be able to learn how to do wrist, and the, what is it, X beating one, <laughs> yeah. X beating one, and then sometimes you have to do that. That's a really good question. How about last one? Let me see if there's any question. Uh, piccolo cello for box six, somebody said. Yeah. Uh, have try. you played on a piccolo cello? I've never played one, but have you? Yeah, it's like really tiny, just for like a second. When I was in London, I tried one, but I didn't know how to play it, but it was pretty funny. It's pretty small. <laughs> All right, one last question on YouTube. As a student, it is better to go through, is there a question? As a student, it's better to go through a whole suite at once or start with the preludes or other movements. Technically, the different movements may be more or less difficult. That's a good question. What do you think? So this is actually a really great question. So for me, all the suites are um, basically there are four movements that are like the pillar movements. They're the Alaman and Courant, which are a pair, and then the Saraban and the Jig. So I actually like to start with either the Alaman Courant pair or the Saraband and Jig pair so that I get like kind of like the pillars. Then I go back to do the prelude and then the minuets or the berets or the gavats. Because I actually think that it's kind of like, I don't know, when I was writing papers in school, I always wrote the introduction last. Oh, really? Because it was like, <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to write about until after I wrote it. And I was like, okay, here's what I'm going to do like to introduce it. So I always like to do kind of the prelude as kind of like, okay, now I know what I'm preluding about, you know? What are you preluding about? Yeah, but, I mean, it's like, the prelude is like one hefty, like, it's the meat, Yeah. you know? Um, anyway, um, I mean, we can go on and on because Absolutely. we <laughs> love talking about, we were on Clubhouse with Nathan Chan. Nathan, is are you here? I think he was here earlier. And we were, Instagram, yeah, yeah and, and a couple other people, and we were just nerding out like crazy, talking about all this cello <laughs> technique stuff, and I was like having so much fun. So we can go on, but guess what? You can join us again this Sunday at 1 p.m. The only way you're going to get a link is to sign up right now so that you can get an email with the link um, and additional information, um, and we're going to talk, we're going to nerd about basically sound production, right? Yes. Uh, like how to make a good sound. And Which, and the three mistakes that I, you know, that we see people make in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, to make sure that you're not doing those three mistakes because 
they're killers. Yeah. So thank you, Sayun, for coming on my show, I guess. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Wendy. It's so yeah, this is I'm just calling it the Cello Mastery Series. I love and I, it. I'm hoping to interview everybody. Uh, I think well, not so everybody, great. but people I like only. But I like most people. <laughs> <laughs> and I already asked Nathan. Nathan, you didn't respond to me. Come on my show next week if you can. Oh, okay? my God. Nathan should definitely do it. No show. pressure. So... No pressure, Nathan. Oh, he maybe is not listening to me anymore. But anyway, um, okay, so I'll see you guys this Sunday with Sayun. We'll just geek out about sound production, and um, that's it, I guess. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me, Wendy. So fun. Bye. Okay, guys. Bye. <laughs> Let me end this podcast. <laughs>